This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Time's finally come to put these girls outside. This is what they looked like last time you saw them. All I've been doing is watering them every two days with a pH of 6.3. And these three gallon pots have been getting about one gallon per watering. The tent is getting pretty full, but the leaves are starting to look a little bit droopy. They're not praying upwards the way I'd like to see them. And I think it's because the roots are getting a little bit tight in their pots. Also, the strawberry lemonade is a little bit close to the light and I think it's starting to get a little bit light burn and the leaves up top feel a little bit dry and it's probably about 10 to 12 inches taller than the rest of the plants. Since the weather is finally clearing up outside and the days are long enough, it's time to shut the lights off and put them outside. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of confusion from a lot of different new growers about putting their plants outside when you start them indoors. I'm gonna try and explain it as quick and as simple as I possibly can. When a plant is outside, it's true, it will start flowering when the days are 14 hours long and the nights are 10 hours. But when you put them outside and the days start to slowly decrease, the plants know that fall is coming. For example, my plants will start flowering around August 14th which is about 14 and a half hours of light. That's not 14 hours of light. And the reason that is, is because the plants feel the gradual change in the days, so they know that fall is coming. I start my plants on an 18-6 light schedule indoors. And when I put them outside, they go from 18-6 to 14 and a half hours of daylight. So other than going from 18 hours to 14 and a half hours one time, after that, the plant begins to get more light every day. So every single day, the plant knows the days are getting longer, not shorter. And I think that a mistake that a lot of people do is lowering their light schedules slowly to match the schedule outside. Because even if you do that to 14 and a half hours, the, the plant still may think fall is coming and still may trigger into flower. I hope that makes sense. And if anybody has any questions, just drop a comment or a question down in the comment section. All right, now for the fun bit. I basically just take my plant, throw it on the 50 gallon pot, and I just mark out where I want it so I know where to dig my hole. And I do my best not to damage the cover crop or drop too much dirt on top of it. Because I'm growing living organic, I don't want to damage the mycelium network growing through the soil. So I do want it to be a fairly tight fit, so everything's as undisturbed as possible. So I put the pot into position, and I can tell that the tops were pretty tight in a couple spots, and I needed to dig a little bit more out. And then once I do that, I try fitting it again. I dig down and position the pot so that the soil levels are perfectly level to one another. And here's what the roots look like on the strawberry lemonade. Definitely needed to be put into a new pot, there's no question of that. I put my plant into the hole and I give it a little push down. I then take the soil I just dug out and I start filling in the cracks and voids and shoving it into the cracks with my fingers until it feels dense, like there's no voids left in there. I avoid having the soil run up the stalk. The base of the plant, I basically want to be the same level as it was before. I level it out and I pack it down, and that's the first plant transplanted outside. Next up is the Bruce Banger. The Bruce Banger is two and a half weeks behind the rest of the plants, but 
It's high sativa, so I think it's gonna actually catch up and become one of the taller plants. One thing that some growers like to do is they like to sprinkle more mycorrhizae onto their roots before they transplant. I don't do that, I find it unnecessary since all the soil that I've used right from the beginning is already inoculated with mycorrhizae fungus. I am trying to get the soil fairly flat because I do want to put more cover crop on once I get these transplanted. And next up is the velvet bud, and we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing, only this time it's a round pot. And last but not least is hash plant, my most indica strain. All right, I deserve a smoke break. I'm token on some Durban poison. This stuff is killer. Let me know in the comment section what you guys are smoking on today. Now I'm gonna put some cover crop on. I have white Dutch clover and micro clover. I'm just mixing the last of my seeds together and then I'm gonna spread the rest of them out equally over these four pots. I make sure to put seeds underneath the plants where the new soil is, and then I fill in any empty gaps that were missed before when I put the cover crop on initially. Now it's time to water in, and like usual, when I do a transplant, I like to water in with kelp. The kelp has trace elements as well as growth hormones that are both readily available to the cannabis. And the readily accessible nutrients are extremely beneficial during times of stress like during a transplant. I then use pH down and I pH my water to 6.3. I gently water the plants in to try and not move around the cover crop seeds too much and I believe each pot got about 2 gallons of water. Any leftover kelp water that I have I use on the tobacco and then the rest of the plants in my garden. Anybody who grew outdoors in 2019 in the Northern Hemisphere knows that we had some crazy mold problems. And I'm not messing around this year. I'm burning sulfur the very first day these plants are outside. My makeshift sulfur burner is basically a candle holder with a few chunks of wood spacing a tea candle uh, the correct distance away from a tuna can that I have full of elemental sulfur. 
Burning sulfur is a fantastic organic method of dealing with mold and powdery mildew. There are proper sulfur burners. They're about $200 and it's on my to get list. I keep my oscillating fans on while the sulfur burns and I turn off the extraction fan. After sundown, I light the candle and it burns for about three hours. I ended up making a little shield out of tin foil to keep the wind from blowing out the candle. Anyways, this is the next morning after transplant. The sun has just come up and I thought I'd show you inside the greenhouse. The tobacco plants are praying upwards in the early sunlight. I mean, look at that leaf stretch up. I love tobacco, I think they're beautiful plants. And of course, the cannabis. The girls have been in their pot for one night and they're looking pretty good right now. Give it a week or so and these girls are gonna look amazing. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll be documenting everything I do with all these girls and the tobacco plants through the 2020 growing season. And of course, feel free to drop a comment or a question and we'll see you guys next time.